Today, we are going to address one of the most prolific questions asked at the beginning of organic chemistry. That is, are these enantiomers, diastereomers, or the exact same thing? Like anything else, the best way to improve at answering these questions is through repetition. And that's exactly what this video is going to provide. Here's a problem. Are these two things, enantiomers, diastereomers, or identical? Pause it, give it a go. Tell me your answer, and then I'll tell you mine. Okay, so the answer is that these two are enantiomers. Um, the reason why is that it's important to note that uh, the orientation of double bonds ha has an effect on stereochemistry. So the fact that the double bond is facing in like different directions means that we can't really gauge um, the chiral center right now as it is. So what we have to do is flip this one over, or at least one of them, um, so that the, the double bond can align. So that way we can judge uh, the orientation of the chiral center. So if we do that, if we move this one down here, we get this. Notice we didn't just we didn't just like slide this over like that because that doesn't line up, right? What we did do was flip it sort of like a pancake, so uh, so that we can turn this around to line up with this. So now we can slide this over to line it up with this as the same thing. However, you can probably tell by now that these two are not the same. The difference uh, lies in this individual stereocenter. An easy way to identify or to, to name the comparison between uh, things like this is that when the only thing that changes is one stereocenter, they are most likely enantiomers. Um, when multiple there, when there are multiple stereocenters and they all change, they're enantiomers. When there are multiple stereocenters and some change but some don't, they're diastereomers. But in cases like this, when there's only one stereocenter, uh, a change in them can only result in them being enantiomers. Okay, but that's not the only way to do this. That's just the way that I like doing it because I can scale it up easily to more difficult problems. Um, the way that your professor will most likely initially define enantiomers is as uh, non-superimposable mirror images. Uh, so a good way, like we can tell that these are not superimposable already because we can't slide this over to line up on top of it, right? However, well, now that means that the next step in analyzing this problem is to decide whether or not these are mirror images. So we do a mirror image test. You can imagine that the line I just drew is a mirror, right? Where things that are close to the mirror appear close in the other side, and things that are far away appear equally distant on the other side as well. And nothing that is coming out towards us could be going back because the mirror wouldn't line up that way. So a way that we can tell if these are enantiomers is if these are mirror images of each other, which they are. So these two are enantiomers. Check by both methods. New one, what is the relationship between these two? We can assign R or S to each spot and see what changed. So for the OH, um, this is first priority because it's an oxygen uh, as opposed to a carbon. 
you move away from it, this ends at a CH3. This ends at a C that spawned into an oxygen, so this is second priority. This is third. The hydrogen is behind us, so we can just count around. One, two, three. This is R. We do the same thing here. Uh, this is first priority, second priority, third priority. And this is a trick. Um, the oxygen's going back and the other two are in plane. So the hydrogen's coming towards us, right? The fourth priority is coming towards us. So we can count around one, two, three, as if it would, uh, as if it was behind us, so make it R, but because it's coming towards us, just flip it. It's an S. Okay. That's one thing that's different. So these are not the same. We can rule out them being the same, All right? Let's move over to this iodine over here. Um, one, two, actually, let me clear this up real quick. Okay, so now we can work on this carbon right, this carbon right here. Okay. Um, this is first priority. This is second priority. And this is third. We know that the, um, the hydrogen is coming out of us. That's the fourth priority. We count one, two, three, which would be S. But the hydrogen is coming towards us, so we flip it. That makes this R. We can do that over here. First priority, second priority, third priority. Count one, uh, two, three. That's S, because there's no flip. The hydrogen is going back. It's always the fourth. You're always looking at the carbon with the fourth priority facing behind, and then you count around. Um, so that's two S's on this side and two R's on this side. Um, that looks like it would be an antimers because they're the same, but there's one more carbon. We haven't checked that. Okay. So for this carbon here, this is the first priority. This is the second priority. This is the third priority. We count one, two, three. So it goes that way. Uh, counterclockwise makes it in S. However, the hydrogen is coming towards us so we reverse it and that is an r on this side and same thing here one two three one two three s but hydrogen's going back so it's an r okay so now looking at this now that we assigned r and s to everything it's a lot easier to determine if these are the same enantiomers in 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 or diastereomers the fact that anything's different means they can't be identical, right? Um, for them to be enantiomers, everything would have to change. For them to be mirror images that can be on top of each other. So if if this carbon didn't exist, oops, this carbon didn't exist, or that, that chiral center didn't exist, at least, these would be enantiomers. However, it does. So two things are different, and one thing is the same. So it's partly different, which makes them diastereomers. And so we return to the Newman projection. I'm giving you these because this is a way that your professor could very well likely um, pose these questions on exams. Also, I'm, I'm almost certain they will, um, because you have to be able to understand the orientation of a Newman projection and how it relates to uh, the model of the actual uh, molecule. So are these enantiomers, diastereomers, or the exact same thing? Give it a shot. The answer is that these two are actually enantiomers. And I want to show you a method that makes visualizing this much easier. Um, and that is drawing it out or at least redrawing the Newman projection as a skeleton model. When we look at any Newman projection, we should be able to know um, what carbon uh, aligned with the like correspond, like what is the corresponding carbon? Um, the front carbon, this one, is this. The back carbon, which is this one, is this. And then each of these methyl groups are these. 
So we could be able to redraw this, right? However, uh, like, how would we look at it? Like, this this methyl group is sticking out to the side, so is this one. The hydrogens are in plane. The chlorines are sticking out to the side. It wouldn't line up, and like, stereochemically, the way that this one does. So how do we make it so it lines up right? The way that you can go about doing that is to redraw the Newman projection so that the, the methyl groups are in plane before even drawing as a skeletal structure. So I rotate, I physically rotate the projection uh, so that I line up the methyl groups and ends up looking like this. Notice I rotated the front carbon to the left and the back carbon to the right. So now it's all about perspective. We're looking at the new one projection from the side to get the skeletal structure. And we're looking at the skeletal structure um, from the side like this from here to get the new one projection. But which side, if we're going to rewrite the new one projection as a skeletal structure, which side of the Newman projection are we looking at? And the way we can do this is we think about uh, the methyl groups all coming off of the carbon because they're in plane, right? Uh, this, this carbon has a methyl group that's facing up, which is this one. If we look at the Newman projection, this carbon has a methyl group facing up. So the back carbon has one facing up. And this carbon has one facing down. And that's this one. So the front carbon has, has a methyl group facing down. So then, which side are we looking at it from? In order to have the left be the one facing up and the right be the one facing down, we have to look at it from this direction. Now we can rewrite that. CH3 on top to the back carbon, to the front carbon, to the CH3 on the bottom. Okay. Now since we're looking at it from the left side, um, what's coming towards us and what's going away from us? You can see that the hydrogens, the hydrogens are closer to us than the carbons themselves. Therefore, the hydrogens would be on wedges, but we don't indicate hydrogens in skeletal structures. What we do indicate are the chlorines that are facing away. So, we can draw this. This skeletal structure equals this Newman projection. Now we just have to compare. We'll do this both ways. First, with the uh, R or S method, this carbon, this is first priority, second priority, third priority, is coming towards us. One, two, three. Uh, that's S because it goes counterclockwise. So this is an S. Adversely, this carbon, we have one, two, three also moving in counterclockwise, which makes that an S. Okay, so the first structure is S, S. Now let's compare it to the second one. Same thing for this carbon, you have one, two, three. It's moving in a counterclockwise direction, which would be um, S, but we have to reverse it because um, the hydrogen is coming forward because the chlorine is going back, which makes this an R. For this, we do the same thing. One, two, three, reverse it, and you have an R. So now we know that the stereochemistry for both of the chiral centers in the original uh, structure are reversed in the one we're comparing it to. Therefore, these must be enantiomers. Okay, now we can do the um, mirror image test just as a second check uh, to see if 
these are actually enantiomers. Remember, we're checking to see if these uh, structures meet the definition of being uh, mere images that are not superimposable upon each other. It might be a little harder to see in this orientation, but we can line these up so that we can draw the mirror um, on the paper. To do that, I'm just going to flip this one like a pancake. So I'm going to lift it off of the paper, off of the page, and turn it over so that uh, it's just flipped over like a pancake. You'll see it looks kind of like this. Hopefully, you can see that all we did was we turned the or we flipped uh, this structure like a pancake to get the other one. But now we can line these up along a mirror to see if they are in fact mirror images. And you can see that all of like this carbon lines up, this carbon, this chlorine lines up, this carbon lines up. Uh, so do the ones in the back, the same distance. They're both facing, they're all facing out at us. Um, these are in fact mirror images. Now the question becomes if they're superimposable. And the way we can do that is just moving them over on top of each other, and they're not. I think hopefully you can see that uh, these two structures wouldn't overlap, given that the carbon on this side is facing down while the chlorine is facing up, and the carbon on this side is facing up while it's facing down, and vice versa. So these are most definitely enantiomers. Okay, we did new in projections, and now uh, we're going to try with chair conformations. It's another um, way of drawing uh, structures that your professor is likely going to use to try to throw you off. The good thing about these is that it's really not hard to convert these to uh, skeletal structures. Uh, just know that with every like ev with every uh, chair conformation, uh, it's like you're looking you're looking at the chair from above. That's what it seems like. So if I were to try to draw this as a chair, it would look something like this because we're looking above, right? So these two uh, uh, OH groups are coming towards us. So we can redraw this chair conformation as this. Notice that the OH groups are going away from us because they are facing down uh, while we're looking at it from above. So they're on the opposite side of the carbon ring. So now all we have to do is compare these. Hopefully you can tell by assigning R or S that this is R, this is S. Now, this is S, and this is R. So, what are these? You could be quick to say that they are enantiomers because each, uh, each carbon, each chiral center, changed its uh, classification. However, let me let me try something really quickly. What if we do the pancake flip again on this? What would that look like? Now what do we think? Seriously, now what do we think? Let me compare. I, 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 a comparison is not even necessary. This and this are the same thing. But if if this equals this and this equals this, these two are identical. But like why why does that why does that happen? This is what we call a meso compound, meaning that it has chiral centers, but symmetry allows for it to be the same thing as its own mirror image. So its mirror image is identical to itself as opposed to being um, its enantiomer. 
That's why we talk about the part of the definition of being an anti mirror, which is being a non superimposable uh, mirror image. These are superimposable mirror images. They are exactly the same. You could probably guess that it would be really helpful to be able to spot uh, meso compounds when they appear. So what we're going to do is try giving you the tools to identify them. Um, which of these are meso compounds, if, if any? Or if either, I guess. Yeah. Let's focus on this one first. We already saw something similar to this earlier. And you may or may not remember the conclusion we came to. But these are enantiomers. They're, they're, this is their mirror image. And they're not superimposable. They just overlap. But now the question is why? More importantly, uh, how can you tell quickly? Uh, I'm gonna give you two ways. The first is understanding that when we talk about chirality, we're not talking about uh, the position of substituents of carbons in relation to the entire molecule, more so their position in relation to other substituents of that carbon. That might sound like a lot, but it really boils down to uh, the fact that single bonds can rotate freely. So this is the same thing as this. Now the question becomes, is this a meso compound? And we can try drawing the, uh, the mirror image of this which looks like this. And these are not the same, I will tell you right now. It might be hard for me to show you that these can't superimpose, but if I try to lift this up here, you can tell they're not the same because this flooring is facing back, well, this is facing forward, and the same, or vice versa for these. So if we try to overlap the carbons, you'll have the fluorines coming off in different directions. They wouldn't overlap, but they're, they're not superimposable. So those are enantiomers, making the original compound not a meso compound. The other way to, to figure these out quickly is more of a trick, which is why I show you the first way first, because that's important for your understanding and this will just help you get it really quickly. And that's just to follow these rules. You can count the number of carbons between the carbons with stereochemistry and then determine if it's meso or not. That is, if there are zero or an even number between them, the, car the, the substituent must be on opposite sides to be uh, meso. Whereas if there's one or any odd number, between them, they must be on the same side. By that I mean, if you look at this, um, there's zero carbons between them and they're on the same side, therefore it's not meso. However, if it was, oops, if it was um, like it is with zero carbons between them and they're on opposite sides, this is a meso compound. Similarly, you can use that trick to answer the other, uh, the other molecule I showed you. Is this a meso compound? The answer is yes, because there is one carbon between them, which is an odd number, and the fluorines are on the same side. So it's mirror image, which is this. is the exact same thing. They're not identical, they're identical. Okay, more practice. What is the relationship between these two? Give it a shot and I'll tell you. 
okay, you may have said that these are diastereomers or something. The answer is that they're identical. Um, easiest way to check this is to go through assigning R and S, and then you'll catch the biggest the biggest problem. Um, first, we do this carbon. I mean, we don't even need to do this carbon, really, but we'll do it anyways. You can tell they're the same because uh, everything looks the same, but we'll do both at the same time. Uh, this is one, two, three. So we're looking at it this way. So we have one, two, three. This is R. These are both R. They stay the same. Okay. So now for the other carbon, if there is a change, they're diastereomers because um, there is a chiral center that has stayed the same, so they can't be in antimers. And if there isn't a change, there's the same thing. Um, your first look could be to the OH group and how it's in a different spot on each of them, like it's changed, which would normally just directly indicate that uh, it's a different orientation. But this is the thing. One of the biggest tricks that professors will give you on exams to see if you're going too fast or rushing is they'll just like write a methyl group in different positions to see if like, this just to throw you off. All four of these things I drew arrows to are exactly the same. They're just a CH3. But just because um, on one side, it's going away from the plane and on the other side, it's coming towards you. Um, the way you draw it's different. So the the truth is that this carbon isn't even chiral. It's not even a chiral center. So given that the only chiral center in this stayed exactly the same, these two are equivalent. They're the same thing. Just rotated. Nice. Okay, here we go. We're back to the Newman projections. What is the relationship between these two? Um, try it out. Remember, uh, to try to convert these to skeletal structures. It makes it a lot easier. So let's do one at a time and move the methyl groups into the plane. For the, for the one on the left, we end up with this. And if we can convert this to a Newman projection, we just look at it from one side Say we look at it from the left, um, and we can just draw this out. So first thing I'm drawing is this carbon, then the back carbon, then the front carbon, then this carbon. So I'm going to number these just one, two, three, four. I'm starting with one and drawing it to two, then to three, and then to four. Now we just have to uh, place the substituents on. So we're looking from the left, and the first carbon that has stuff coming off of it is carbon two. It's the back carbon, in which the NH3 is away from us. So we draw it like this. And then the second carbon, the front carbon, the OH, is coming towards us. Because it's close to, it's close to the RI. Now the Newman projection on the right is already, um, already rotated. If we do the same numbering, it's already, it's, it's already like the carbons are already in plane, right? So if we do the same uh, numbering conventions as we did last time, we'll have one, two, three, four on the carbons in the order that we draw them. So that should give us one to two to three to four, right? And we'll look from the left side again. However, this time uh, we draw it like the, the back carbon has the NH3, which is the one on the, the, the left, coming towards us. 
and the front carbon has the OH also coming towards us. So now we have it in line structures. So now we just need to compare these. Hopefully it's easy to tell, but um, we'll do it anyways. Uh, this is one, two, three for the first one, counterclockwise, but the, the hydrogen's coming towards us, so reverse it clockwise is R. And then for the other side, this is one, two, three, going counterclockwise, which is S. Now we can do it for the other one. This is R, and this is also R. So these are diastereomers. And that's that. Good job.